Welcome back to our house build and barn build project. This is part, I think this is part four of the uh, horse barn timber frame build. And uh, in this episode, I'm going to be taking uh, the timbers that are already in here, which are these eight footers and uh, there are four twelves and two 20 footers. And we're going to be doing, excuse me, we're going to be making all of the uh, posts and beams for the two stalls and the tack room, this side of the barn. And yesterday after work, I took some time and did some measuring and uh, I laid out one of the posts. And let's see, what do we got? Yeah, they're only a total of 80 inches long, so finally, finally dealing with stuff that's not going to kill me. It's uh, so, the posts are only 80 inches long, and um, that's it. I'm going to start filming and making posts and beams, and hopefully get this section of the barn up in the next few days. And then after that, it's we're going to concentrate on the roof over this section, so... Let's make some sawdust. All right, there's the uh, post cut to length with the top and bottom tenons. I'm going to uh, get set up to do the mortising next, so hold on.
There's number one. All right, there's number two. There's number three. All right, there's the last. There's the last post on this side, the last of the four. Next, I'm gonna work on uh, the beams connecting this wall to the stuff that's already up. So that's the next step. Well, good morning. Uh, yeah, it's late in the morning. It's another day in the house build, uh, the barn build. Jeez, can't get anything right. So I got all the posts made and I got the four um, beams all made. And then the last major part of the puzzle are these two 20 footers which will be uh, scarfed together and make the top plate um, so that's what I'm working on now I'll uh, film some of the, the making of the scarf um, I've never filmed that part of a timber frame build before and everybody's got their own method and I've come up with my own method so they don't don't be too critical <laughs> and I'll explain as I go all right I hope you can see this so this is the end of this 20 foot timber it's actually 20 foot 6 or 20 foot 7 and I sighted down it to see if it had a crown and uh, it has a slight crown so I'm gonna work with the crown going up so this is actually oh heck yeah this is actually the top so uh, I hope you can see this um, years ago I bought Ted Benson's uh, timber frame book which is excellent you know I um, I didn't have any experience and it was a really good place to start and he used a scarf joint in there uh, he had uh, detailed plans I think of several different kinds of scarf joints and I, I, on my first building that I built, um, I copied that because I had to start from something. And I, after having watched it when it shrunk in years gone by, I have modified that uh, uh, design a little bit. Um, and basically, I just use a framing square. Um, hold on a second. I use a framing square because it's on the job, it's always on the job site. So no sense in uh, making a special pattern or anything like that because the framing square is always here. So, so the scarf ends up being uh, about two feet long. So when you're uh, milling up timbers, you've got to take into account that um, you're gonna lose some of the length in in the scarf joint because the two timbers have to overlap so uh, anyway that's uh neither here nor there at the moment so anyways uh what i do for uh this simple scarf joint is um just lay out the two points across here and just draw all of this out here And then, of course, down one side and over here. So, uh, I don't even know what this scarf joint is called, but basically we're going to end up putting a wedge. There's going to be a scarf joint with a uh, pair of wedges in the middle. So, 
Let's see. So I haven't done one of these in a while, so I'm getting a little thinking here. So uh, I'm going to leave two. If the, the scarf, the, the space for the wedges is two inches square. So that's the center of the scarf joint. So we'll go back an inch and we'll lay this out here. there so basically I'm going to cut that line this line here and that and remove all of that and um, do the same thing on the other piece which will which is a uh, mirror image and it, it lines up up to here and then it leaves me a hole in the middle with two inches square uh, that I can use two wedges to drive these two um, drive these two apart basically or together and then I actually I, um, I actually am going to put two galvanized bolts through this to help keep that together um, I started out doing some when I started out I, I also did uh, some barn restoration and in doing so, I worked on a barn that, I guess they called it a slung barn. It had a uh, truss built into the roof and there were metal rods that uh, supported the first floor. They hung from the truss. And in repairing that building, uh, there was considerable rot around all the metal because I'm, in my theory is that uh, on the metal uh, condensed water and it ran down the steel rod and it rotted around the fastenings in the timber. So I'm really leery about using uh, steel and wood. If I can get away with it, I'd rather not use it. But in this case, I've also seen these scarf joints uh, open up a little bit as one or the other timber or both of them tend to twist um, when, as they're drying so a, as a precaution um, I've gone to the extent of actually putting in two uh, galvanized bolts or uh, carriage bolts I think they are and uh, had complete success uh, makes the joint really strong and um, I have to use some steel but it's used in the right spot so let me get started on this and it'll become a lot clearer as how I uh, go about cutting these scarf joints <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, saw down this line I'll flip it over and I'll saw down that same line on the other side and I'll remove this triangle off of here and I think I'm going to, um, and then I'll end up planing that surface right down to those lines to make sure that they're perfectly flat. So first step, get rid of this triangle right here. All right, the next step is to uh, use a sawzall with a, I have a pruning blade on it. It's very aggressive, got deep gullets. So it works really good on um, the timbers that aren't completely dry. And I'm gonna now just cut off that triangle waste piece. So hopefully you can see that. Let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's uh, let's see. Yeah. So I'm not down to the line over here, and I'm not down to the line on the other side. So 
Now what I'm going to do, oh, are you pointing in the right direction? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a uh, hand plane or my power planer and basically get that right down to the line on both sides and keep checking it so that it's completely flat. And uh, that's kind of a, a, that is critical. You need to get this surface right on the money because it affects uh, the, the rest of the steps. So let me go get set up and uh, turn you back on. All right, I took the plane and I got this all down to the lines and it's all flat. Actually, I should check it in this direction. That actually looks pretty good. All right, um, I gotta find my pencil. Where's my pencil? Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, under, under the handle right there. I see it. Right under the handle. Under the handle of the chalk saw. So the next part is to connect these lines at the end which they line up nicely and uh, to redraw the line at the top here with that thing right there yeah, I don't know where my tape measure went So those lines should be 24 inches on center, which they are perfect, 24 inches between the lines. And so we want to, like I explained before, leave a two inch, when the, both pieces are mated together, there want to, wants to be a two inch, uh, two by two hole all the way through. So I'm drawing a line at 11 inches. Draw that line. There. And now I'm just going to set the skill saw to uh, two inches deep. And I'll cut that off. I'll, I'll leave the skill saw at squ uh, as square as a 90 degrees. So it there makes it easy. You don't have to put any bevels on anything. So basically this cut is 90 degrees here. So I'll cut that off. And then I'll do a series of cuts in here all the way between both lines and knock all that material out and um, plane it down to those lines. So we'll be left with we'll be left with this jog looking thing. Anyways, uh, I gotta put you on time lapse. This is gonna take a little bit.
another important thing is uh, to keep to don't change the depth on the skill saw so every when you do the uh, scarf on the other piece uh, you can plane down to the same depth marks and uh, the scarf should fit together really nice All right, hopefully you can see that. We're down to the lines. And that's basically one half of the scarf. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end of the timber, the other timber, and then I'm gonna put them together. And then I'll do all the layout for all of the mortises for the tenons and wind braces. So stick around. All right, I'm gonna, uh, this, is the, this is actually the, one of the two top plates off of the sawmill shed that got crushed by that tree and you can see the what we're creating on the new ones and uh, those bolts actually um, held that thing together the other one's actually in better shape um, so it, it, this joint does work it's probably not the most the strongest joint but you know big tree crushing it seems to and it seemed to sustain that blow so i'm pretty confident in uh doing what we're doing is going to work out All right, there it is, first fit. I think it looks pretty good. So, whoop, you can see, it stretches the length of the building. And now, this is actually, oh, hold on. <clears throat> this is actually, I laid it out, so this is actually the underside. So I can actually do all the layout now for uh, all the mortises and, um, then I can do that and then we cut it to length and then uh, it's on to next part this is the last part of the timbers for that side of the barn uh, well almost the last side of the timbers I've got some 4 by 4s to cut next and then um, wind braces so I'm going to uh, start laying out for all the mortises now all right um, I hope you can see this. <clears throat> that's that's the joint. I only spent I don't know a couple of minutes uh, curving it with that with that sawzall. Basically, you get it close, and then you run uh, you clamp it in place, and you run the uh, saw through both ends and uh, drive it together. So that's. It really took me about two <laughs> just a couple of minutes and that's the result and the underside is nice and tight just to, like this so uh, that now that this is together and I'm happy with the look of the joint I can now measure from that end which has already been square cut and squared up I can measure the, the length accurately and then do the layout so that's the next step All right, I got all of the mortises plowed out. I just need to chop out 
some for the uh, wind braces and then check all the fits I gotta cut it to length and then we gotta flip it over and do some work on the other side so it's getting there all right it's the end of the day for me I managed to get the top plate all done so I have all the big beams uh, done I was hoping to get the four by fours but I've just run out of energy so I'll get uh, work on that tomorrow morning and then it's supposed to be, be two days of rain so it's gonna be a few days before we get this put up so stick around um, the assembly is coming up all right good morning I got distracted this morning forgot to film some stuff but I got this bent partially together and I am actually going to lift it in place and get it completely plumb and then drill and peg it. Um, I, I think it's just going to be easier to uh, tap on the top with a sledgehammer and get everything in place and wiggle down in place. So uh, I've got a little bit more prep to do and then um, I can lift this in place. So. Hold on. All right, I'm going to get the uh, horizontal pieces on. The, hopefully that'll tie it all together and then I can uh, drill and peg it.
for today. You can mess with it, fuss around with it tomorrow. We're kind of like running out of time and he pretty much we, we just had to mow this last batch because the weather forecast for the next week is not very good so um, anyway it's the neighbor's yard they are letting us mow it and we're gonna feed it to the horses this winter so anyway Brian said to do a walk around so here I am this is um, gonna be the walk around um, so today I went food shopping and when I came back the whole stall and tack room area was all framed in and um, it was like it was like so exciting to drive down the driveway and see that all these beams were up and the posts were up and gosh it's just amazing so um, you've already seen if you've been watching all the videos you've already seen the center aisle part and the floor of the loft there's the center aisle and here's another view of the this would be like as if you were walking into the barn and on your right is the tack room area and then just like in our old barn first stall is homer and second stall will be maestros so, I just can't believe how great this looks. I'm so excited. Um, Brian has just been going nonstop today. So, anyway, it's really, all this work is worth it because it looks amazing. Um, I don't know. I don't know how he gets it to come together like that, like all the puzzle pieces, but... loves doing beams and posts and anything like this so thanks for watching everybody